All right. Are you all set, Sarah? Yeah. Okay. It's 6.30. Let's call this meeting of uh, Spinsbun. Nice. Thank you. Uh, the August 9th meeting of the Royal Spinsbun Board to order. Uh, let's start with um, community input. No? No community input at this point? All right. Uh, on the consent calendar with the minutes from the July 27th meeting, did everyone have a chance to review? Everyone's good? All right. It was one typo, but it was all in my notes. Oh, no. That's um, not fine. It's fine. Okay, so we'll accept those meeting minutes with the, with the typo correctly. Um, okay, I don't see fire here yet. Um, is Mark going to come in to talk about I believe so. The, okay. So why don't we start with Highway, George. You're up. I don't have any PO, so you guys do. <laughs> uh, I do have an issue with the tobacco where you come where you want to have to be installed, and I'll have a price on that. But uh, they say uh, speed sensor, so when you're driving down the road, it would shift from fourth gear to first gear without any. Yeah. Wow. So we pretty much send you into the windshield. Okay, but that I mean, a speed sensor versus a transmission or something is probably won't be. Yeah, it's shifting fine out of the pad. I mean, we're going down the road fine, and all of a sudden, drop down the road here, just about saying it's Yeah. And they had some issues with apparently some others with the speed sensor. But of course, they couldn't do it without diagnosing it. Uh, sure. So I don't know how much it's going to be. I'm going to give you a heads up. Uh, okay. Also, I, apparently, you've already known about the uh, ARPA funds. I got an email this weekend saying that we didn't apply for any of it. With a substantially higher number than you people had seen, apparently, we mistake. Yeah. Uh, I, I must fill off my chair when right, I read that uh, number this morning. Where we have to put the stormwater, I think Caroline said we could probably use it for stormwater, so it might not be a bad idea to think about that for putting the uh, the wash um, bay, I suppose. Oh, yeah. Get the you know, I think that would uh, help considerably. Or extending the stormwater up to the fire station, which would help significantly lower the, you know, putting in a storage tank to have the stormwater clean and stuff like that. And stuff. I'm not sure exactly how much that would cost, but be, I think this wouldn't be a, a, good, a good place to use that if it's something you guys don't think about doing with it. So I think tonight, um, when we get to that uh, item on the agenda, we'll just uh, vote to either accept or not accept the funds and then there has to be a public hearing of that. Like what, what's the order of operations? You do eventually have to have a public hearing, but okay. not until you have a project in mind. So okay. you can either say you're going to accept all the funds and you can use it all for this purpose, or you may end up having several public hearings every time you identify a project. Okay. okay. I thought that would be uh, helpful as far as getting the wash base the, into the stormwater system. Yeah. Um, to I, me, I don't understand the system at all as far as that stuff goes. Yeah. But, you know. Yep. The one is the, the wash base on the CIP for fire? Um, there is some money in the operating budget this year to help Pretty with uh -huh. um, part of it. It's not going to cover all of it. It can help with engineering if we feel like we need that, particularly in light of the state not allowing us to tie into the stormwater system, which is how we had planned to discharge the water from washing vehicles and fire stations. So now that's been complicated. Um, yes, I think it is on the CIP. At 25000 Yep for the fire station. And it would be less at the highway department because yeah, we can discharge it into the panel uh, into a natural into it, It's natural. not as complicated, but right it, because I mean, as long as the well separated there, we'll discharge the paint water. So. Okay, but that would uh, that would 
potentially save some taxpayer money. Which we're required to do for the stormwater permit. So we can either do it with these funds or do it anyway out of the operating budget. Yep. Okay. Was there a line item in the operating budget specifically? Um, there's a stormwater line. It's not all in there. Some of it's in their professional services. Um, but it's not nearly enough to complete one of those projects. Maybe. I mean, a actually, maybe we could do the highway department, um, but that's separate mm -hmm. from right. regrading to make the water flow properly. Right. So right. It's, it's more it's more involved with it. Than the, you know, that should wait till the road is done. So we can regrade the road so the water comes running into the building. We run out of it. So. But at the same time, that's a year to day requirement for the stormwater right. permit, which just started July first. Because that's going to require, you know. Training is on the outside of the building when the washing trucks are going to go all separate them. But the closest thousand are going to be regrading and probably go hard. Hopefully, you can go off the road down when they do the road construction if they just keep whatever you guys decide. Hot, hot road construction, we'll get that totally regrading. Yep. What is the date for the Russian government? When is it about to be? I'm sorry, what is the date for what? There's a certain day, I'd say August, the end of August, that we have to actually say yay and nay for our memorial. So, so I've heard two dates. I've heard the 18th and the 16th. Okay. So, so it's not the 13th, but um, that email said the 16th. Right. But most correspondence I've seen is the 18th. That's right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, so you sent us an email about old Inigo Hill Road. Mm -hmm. Right. And it looks like the payment's getting torn up there due to ACV activity. Um, what, what are we what are we thinking here? I, I, I honestly, is it our road? Is it someone's road that we don't have in the middle? <laughs> you know, that's another situation here, but that road is being dug up where the ATVs are coming out. We should coming out of something that's not wrong with the road. So, the first thing I want to think about is just Bruce York. Do you know what that name? In conservation, he's the one that keeps the upgrade of the trails. Uh, I believe, yeah, it's probably Bruce. Uh, so we might want to reach out to him and explain, first of all, that because usually when there's like, too much rain, they'll, they'll, they won't let people ride out there because it does damage. Mm -hmm. So now they're doing damage to roads, we should at least let them know before. We gotta let I them. think we should present them with a bill. <laughs> I mean, if they want this to continue as part of their trail system, yep. Destroying town property, someone's going to pay for it, and it shouldn't be the taxpayers. That's my two cents. Okay. Yeah, this is doing a significant, I mean, the pictures show significant damage. All right, so we should uh, address it with the, the club that rides up here that maintains the trails, because they're the ones that are using it. I think I'm a little bit of a trail master. Yeah. I don't know if it's um, I mean, I think we start there and want them to know there's a problem. So, what are their ideas on how to remedy it? You know, make them go two miles an hour as they And they shouldn't be on a public road anyway with those machines, unregistered vehicles, right? There's a, some input from the sheet. So, if they are connecting from trail to trail, they are allowed to be on the road for oh, sure. portions. So there could be, I, I don't know which trails are connecting in this area, yeah, but if there are, they, as long as they're a registered machine and using it as a trail connector, they are allowed to. Okay. Same out on Rollins Road, they can't mm -hmm. cross over the go trail to trail. Yeah, there is a trail crossing. Yeah, it is a trail crossing. Yeah. 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 But I'm sure they'll be responsive. Like, like you said, right. well, yeah. I've had an issue when I, where I used to live, they were on my property and I told them they were on my property and they stopped. Um, so no, are we sure it's a trail system? That's the other thing. Oh, I, True. I, I don't know. Okay. I, you, let's stop. Right. Yeah. You do have the authority to discontinue ATV use. Not that you necessarily want to do that, but since you're exploring options. Yep. Um, the, I've been in touch with the state recently because they reached out because the ATV group was not responsive for a considerable amount of time with the state. And they have to adhere to 
some certain amount of reporting criteria and other things in order to maintain their status with the state that allows them to seek uh, permission from the town to use the trail system. And they're trying to work through those issues. I've connected the state to Bruce York, hoping that they can overcome whatever the, um, the communication problems have been. Um, but that's not yet resolved. But it, it was a re just a reminder that um, Bruce York had brought to my attention at the deliberative session that he was going to be coming back to the town to reaffirm that permission soon. I invited him to come in so we could talk about it and talk about a process and everything. I hadn't seen him. Um, but then subsequently, I heard from the state. So um, it's definitely worth reaching out. But I, I just want to let you know that if it doesn't work out, you're not getting the results that you're looking for. You have the authority to withdraw that permission. Gotcha. Um, do you have any sort of monetary estimate as to the, like, does that section have to be cut out and repaid? Yeah, it's going to be cut out there for sure. Yeah. But, uh, so you just fixed a couple of thousand dollars? Or? I, I, if we did it ourselves, it won't be okay. significant. But you know, it's, I, I just it's not going to stop if they're going to continue to come in from that location. Right. Right. How do you build up our services? I mean, we, it would probably be better off to have an outside company. That, that would help to quantify the cost. But you might also ask, um, we, we can ask Tom Clark to work. Once, once you get in touch with um, the trail club and they see how they, you know, how they respond to this issue, we can work with Tom Clark to see if he feels as though you can attach those damages to that use and he can make that um, I, I, I wonder if it's something like when there's heavy vehicles in a certain area and they you know if you know that somebody's coming in and out in a certain area and they break up pavement you can typically assess that talk to the people um, and have them pay for that but he can be helpful in the enforcement of that potentially yeah, Okay. So what we going is that George is going to contact Bruce, or you're going to contact Bruce? I think it's probably better coming from the road agent because then you can better describe the, the problem. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you for bringing that to our attention. I, I don't think I've ever driven down that road, to be honest, so... Yeah, um, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah I, I happened to... The uh, first time I'd even gone out into scouting ever was last week uh, with Graver Met, and he took me out of his uh, golf cart, and we took a ride around the whole trail system. And if you're looking at... It's not just that kind of damage being done by your TV though. The trail system is really going to be up pretty bad. Hmm. I mean, the stumps are showing now where they continue to go over stumps. And I mean, isn't that what the trail club is supposed to be doing? So maybe they would mm -hmm. just I don't have no idea. I mean, there's holes oh, down in it, too, there that uh, you would, you know, definitely not. Yeah, they're, they're not, I mean, they're pretty rough trails, but I think, I think they're still maintaining them. Okay. But they used to shut it down in times mm -hmm. of the heavy water, wet, mud season. I'm not say they haven't done that this year, though, because I live on a trail. Um, there's an entrance there. They haven't shut it down through all of this road. Mm -hmm. So you might mention that to Bruce, too, mm -hmm. the wet season. Yeah, it's a pretty big mud mm -hmm. okay. okay, anything else? I don't. I, don't know. Okay. Uh, I, I got one thing, just it's a minor thing where I'm going to bring up the two board members. Uh, so it wasn't just past the Saturday, but Saturday before I was at the last one. And, um, oh, are you familiar with the story I'm going to say? Are you familiar with what I'm going to tell you? Because did that tell you the situation? So I was at the dome, and it's kind of my own business to leave. Oh, I did. Somebody had, somebody had been. I really wasn't paying attention. Someone was dropping off there. I was holding another 
You know, I was doing my leads, but what kind of got my attention is whoever the person was, they let their dog out, and their dog had come over. And, and again, I'm not trying to sound like a baby, but literally had come over and jumped on my truck. And I had a dog that I was sitting for someone else in my truck, so I was kind of annoyed by that. So I went over to talk to the dog. When I went over there, he had Pennsylvania plates. And he had a trailer, and he was dropping off these like 40 gallon drums. To me, that looks like that, I'm not going to say chemical waste, but drums that would hold, at minimum, someone's commercial business, not, this isn't residential stuff we're getting rid of, okay? So when I asked him if he was a Lawrence resident, I won't get into much detail, but he really started off with a long foot and uh, basically started squaring and saying a few things. So I just did not address it anymore. I just went on and told Paul about the guy because he had left. But, um, so the first thing I'll bring up is, you know, I know I can't expect you to miss everybody if you had, I couldn't tell if he had a sticker, I can't believe you did with Pennsylvania State's plates, but the other thing is, if someone, if it's a resident or not a resident, they shouldn't be dropping off their business stuff for, for garbage. Okay. I, I'm, and I know it's not you over no, there, I, I, I'm just I bringing know, it up. I know the situation. The, uh, Barrels are not hazardous waste. It's uh, blown in. I mean, it's. Uh, I didn't expect you to say hazardous waste. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but usually any type of barrel I see that I'm familiar with, them, we, we they have a diamond, you know, and it's right. an MSD that says what it is, and it says this is not a chemical. It had no identification except for some chemical name on the barrel. Right, it said uh, styrofoam insulation. Okay. And the guy lives here in town, apparently. Uh, he brought the barrels to us. They take them over to throw a guy in it, and we make money on on the way. So it's okay. And the, the vehicle he had this past weekend is a new vehicle he bought. He said that temporary plate on it. Yeah, I guess that's, I think that's his business vehicle. However, but uh, Ed's been looking for that. Uh, right. He does get the sticker, but he's always had stickers for his spending. All right. So just to point that, I'll get I'll reiterate that if he's even if you guys are making money, if he's bringing his commercial stuff to the dump, it's only supposed to be residential. I believe, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. I know you guys check the sticks and stuff. I know that, but you know, when I asked him if he had a sticker, he was very. Uh, he wouldn't. I'm assuming he did because he didn't have a sticker. That's another one. Hmm. Okay. Alrighty. Anything else for George? No. Okay. Thanks for that, though. Okay, thanks, George. Yeah. Next up, Chief. How is that one? Okay. I only have one thing tonight. I had sent an email out last Wednesday afternoon, and I had a two-page memo attached to it, requesting that we fill the last full-time slot that has kind of been frozen, I guess I would say. Um, it's still in the budget, but we haven't filled it. So I was looking for permission. We have a potential person to fill that slot. That was from my last oral boards. Uh, he finished number two in the oral boards and would have been offered the position if uh, William didn't accept it. So he's a local person right out of Berwick. He's had ties to this area his whole life. And to me, he seems like one of those homebodies that I think would probably stay here more likely than some of the others. For years to come. So I have my proposal out there and any questions or thoughts or comments. Um, I think, so one of the questions I asked of John when I first heard that um, was, what is our coverage like now? And so do we have 24-7 coverage was the question. And does that help remedy um, the fact that I don't think we do? That was the first question. We will, once the other two get back from the academy, we'll be back to 24 7 coverage. So that is always something that we need in this town. We stuff in between Dover, South Road, and Somerset. So a lot of stuff spills in over those town lines even after hours. And this town's going through a transition too. You have a lot of people coming up from Mass, Connecticut, New York, and buying houses just like they are all over the Seacoast. So that's seen that come up this way too. So we're not the sleepy little town still that everyone thinks we are. How many total officers do we have? Got our full time or part time? 
Uh, full time. Okay. Uh, myself, just I was always full time, but now the chief's position has become full time again, where it was part time. Then we have Sergeant Hancock, Mitch, and the two new hires that aren't certified yet. So five. Uh, yes. The only concern I have is, is we have two brand new, you know, brand new, brand new, just going through the academy stuff, and now we're putting us ourselves in a situation of having a third, and I just, my opinion is we tread lightly and let the two patrolmen we have get up on board and see how things are going before we jump, and I, and, and, and I don't mean to deflect on the staff, but you guys did a really good job, you know, when you had even less patrolmen, so I'm just going to throw that out there. I'm not against it, I'm just saying I'm yeah, that, lightly right now. That's sort of the thought I had as well, um, and, and I think that there's a budgetary concern I have because sort of unbudgeted were the admin and the prosecutor, prosecutor, which were dipping into the the full-time line, or I don't know, yeah, no, the mechanics. Sort of, yeah, yeah. But to put to hire another full-timer and get us on the hook for you know a fully loaded employee, I I think I would rather wait and see. Mm -hmm. um, and I know you have someone ready who's not going to be here in a year, um, but no, those were my thoughts. Um, is, the, is the only way we have full time 24 7 coverage is through these of part timers? No, the part timers. As I put in there, you see, uh, don't work much at all. I'm having a hard time just getting them to pick up one shift a month, and that's a Sunday day shift, which I would think would be the easiest shift in the world. Okay. So, so you're looking at, I'm asking, I shouldn't be putting words in the mouth, but it's not me. So you're looking at, you got enough patrolmen. Mm -hmm. You really wouldn't be dipping in the part time at all. And that's it with it. No. Essential we were employee staff. That would give me the ability to rotate people around, have someone on day shift most of the week with me. Um, for example, I have today's day shift log, and between 7 a.m. and 3.30, there were six calls for service. Um, a motor vehicle lockout, a neighbor dispute, fire alarm activation, motor vehicle lockout, suspicious activity, uh, property lost and found, I mean, so when I was talking about this, because I'm covering day shift by myself Monday through Friday, and when I'm supposed to be either in meetings with Caroline or new folks or just doing admin stuff, that's how my day gets broken down. It's constantly being interrupted. Mm -hmm. And why those may seem like little things, and they really are, but every time you try and sit down and do something, and you get called away for something, you just never actually get done what you're trying to get done. So that's one of the biggest problems is when uh, Chief Ducharme was here, he, I understand, is only a part-time employee and you didn't have to worry about the benefits and all that, but he had me to work Monday through Friday and cover what I'm talking about right here, why he still could come and go as he needed and do all the admin stuff. So basically, I'm functioning as the chief of police slash patrolman at the same time. Uh, what happens when um, somebody goes on vacation? How do you handle that? Well, we have to move around with coverage again, and sometimes, even if we're at full staff, uh, we may have to go to call shifts for the week and things like that, and filling this spot would take care of that, where I'd be able to move it around so we wouldn't have to go to those call shifts. So we also keep in mind that with the governor's new order, coming down in the next year or so, each officer is going to be required 40 hours of training per year on t instead of just eight hours. So that's mm -hmm. another expense and coverage that I'm going to have to have to get all these officers at least 40 hours of training. So, so you have five total people doing all the patrols? And two of them are new officers. Right. And so can't. really three of us are doing all I was gonna say that. Right so you can't do them alone. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and you, you continue to augment with part time. Right. Uh, I have one who is very loyal and picks up a lot of shifts. Yeah. So one out of five. 
So does, does that person work with the, the training officers? No. no. So these training officers have to be with Hancock or or myself so at this point. I think I, I would just like to get a better handle on the budget, and I apologize. I, sure. Um, I was on vacation last week, and I didn't really do town stuff for one meeting. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of a mouse, so I don't, I don't, we don't want to like shove in your face and say no because yeah. what you're telling us makes sense and it, it, it could be possible, but I don't want to get fall told right now. I, I agree we should kind of see what the budget impact is, especially from the hires. Uh, maybe we can have that discussion in the next meeting. Do you think you're completely prepared to talk about that by then? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I can certainly meet with Caroline this week and get all those numbers. <laughs> if I could add one more thing. Um, I sent you all today a new budgeting worksheet with expenses through July, right. and I'm sure you haven't seen it yet. Again. but. You can reference that as you think about this. And you might also go back and reference um, MRI's report because he really talked about staffing levels and the the risk of part-timers being less trained and the benefit of full-timers and you know how, what is an overall good staffing level um, for whatever um, level of service and, and some things like that that I think might help you. In, in our budget line, I would uh, specifically ask you to look at the overtime budget because that's almost gone already. Okay. That was yeah, that was one of my questions. That is just trying to get boots on the ground at this point as much as we can because there's only three of us. So, the coverage will always be there. We won't let it not be there, but yeah, but it definitely wears on after a while. Yeah. So I, I have to ask this question: How do you 24 seven Support if there's really only three officers. Right now we don't. Okay. That was the so that's one point. of us is on call. Mm -hmm. So if we get woken up, we have to come in. Okay. Okay. We try not to have a bad idea. No. Good to know. Okay. So we're gonna look at the budget and and crunch the numbers and come up with an answer. Um, at our next meeting. Okay. I appreciate the time. Sure. Um, the only other thing on the agenda under under police was the phone and security system, and I forget what our next step is. We are going to have someone come in right. and talk yeah. to us. Yes. So that's one of the things on my agenda that keeps getting shifted around as I'm doing all this. <laughs> what the hell, John? <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> no, I even worked Saturday this last Saturday, just so broken on day off. <laughs> but that's what we do. Okay, we just move stuff around. Um, I, I do want to say one thing about um, more officers. And I, I'm probably talking about something we all know. We have a risk eating problem in this town. Um, I know for a fact I pulled up to the end of Silver Street and Route 4 the other day. And there were cars going by me, they had me going 50 miles an hour, if not more. So if I can make a plug for um, you know, more officers helping with that problem, then I would do that. Right now, especially with only three of us, there's only one person on at a time. And you know, we get that same complaint all over so, town, but unfortunately, they can only be in one spot. Right. You know, John time. brings up the juices, we just got a, something that Kim brought it, I just thought about it, is you now we have those, that sign on the hero. Mm -hmm. So I know that some, someone was upset about speeding on Willie. And then I know I've had a few complaints from just residents I've talked to right. about heritage. Yeah. Uh, so in Clement, so maybe we can just talk about it now and maybe next week propose it. Maybe we could, you know, propose to get three or four more of those signs. I can't imagine the, that the the ones that one. So the people, you know, some of the people I'm not saying the heritage, it's on heritage. People go down heritage and they think they they think or what the residents think it is, they think they're cutting through. And then they get to the end of it, and they, they so there's a, there's a lot of speed on that road, too. So maybe if even if you had the 30, 35, or whatever, it just went. I mean, people are going to speed, some people are going to speed on that a lot. But some people may just be going fast and really realize they shouldn't. I have no problems with those signs. I know when we put the two on Bear Road, there was some definite pushback after. Yeah, it so. gets people's attention. 
those are like a thousand of keys. Oh, no way. Way. Yeah. I didn't expect them <laughs> now, to do that. Now, that radar sign that we move around, but yeah. right now it's on air to drive at a request of the residents. But, I mean, I got that thing booked out for the next three years if you go by all the people asking for yeah. it. Yeah, no, that's good, though. We should make an effort. And that's why Heritage is the one that I got to what we were talking about. So yeah. yeah. Thank uh, you. Yeah. That one out there last Thursday night. Perfect. So I saw a resident and requested it. Could have been the same resident. Yeah. Yeah. So. But I'd like to do a couple more of those if we have a few of those around town. So it's budget season, right? Don't forget that. So, but that's something to think about. But once we get back up to staff, and I can get two officers on at a time once in a while, it'll we'll help with that. Yeah. Um, last time we had an issue on Bear Road. Uh, one of the part timers who was an early bird, who's a shipyard worker, actually came in and did back to back patrols out there. And we're over 17 tickets in two days. Wow. So, <laughs> no. Was, you know, yeah, that way. yeah, especially probably in the morning hour when I figure nobody's there. Right. I think so. that road, Clement Road, would be another one that was. Yeah. And after Clement Road gets paved, it's going to be even worse. That's true. So. Yeah. That's true. But with uh, the limited staff we have, we try and get out there as much as we can. Okay. Any, anything else for us? That was it. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you. you, John. You're out. Fireworks for me. Yeah, for the guy that you have a fun Okay. She knows you back or you get No, that's your coffee, please. Okay. Put them on the field right now. Perfect. Both of you are in the field right now. Gotcha. Thank you. 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 Hello. Hi, Mark. Good evening. Uh, let's just knock out this one piece of business first and then let's see what we get. Your team knows. I got some information for you for that. Let's okay. see what we want to do with it. Um, I have one PO here that I want to submit, and it kind of feedbacks the, uh, the air filling station that was approved by Warren Article. It's in the fire station in the right there. Um, we made the schedule to have the uh, company come and install it tomorrow along with the electrician. So sometime tomorrow afternoon, the system should be up and running. The only thing we'll have to do is they're going to come back another time for training. So I have a purchase order here tonight. Uh, it's number 1965. It's to Steve Barrasso Electric. That's the gentleman uh, that's going to come in and do uh, the work in the firehouse. It's just not the filling station. This PO encompasses three different things that it's going to accomplish for us. The first one is the wiring for the filling station itself. And I have his estimate here for that, which is 800 for that component. He is going to remove all the old wiring and the drops from the old heating system that was replaced in the uh, old bay. There's like six different points with all kinds of electrical connections that are hanging in. He's going to remove and disable and clean all that stuff up. And then that's 450 for that one section. And then uh, there's going to be a $1,500 component for the pieces that he needs to buy to uh, get all the electrical work done. There's a couple issues in the back room that we've talked about before that needed to be taken care of. And the other component is there's a wire existing now that's going to go from the uh, baseball pot side of the station where the uh, compressor room is, all the way over to where this, to all the way across the back of the station where the filling station is going to be. He's not sure that wire is fiber. He's hoping it is. So with that extra 15 in there, that's in case he needs to go out and replace that and whatnot. So the total for the whole PO that I'm going to put in is $2,700. But I know we're going to come in under that, especially if that wire is viable. You won't have to purchase anything anymore. But I had to put that little piece of cushion in there just so he has to go and get the components he needs that we're still going to be able to do it. This is going to come out of the fire station building maintenance line which was like 7500 we spent minimal on that. It's still close to seven in there anyway. So this is uh, it's going to make a small dent in that one portion. So that's my whole spiel on that. Any questions? Uh, I'll move forward to 1965 uh, Steve Barrasso Electric for a total amount of $2,700? Yes. Not to exceed that, I know we're going to come up. 27 dollars. But the thing was, we got to, again, we, we look around, we try to keep it with our local guys, like like Simo came in, and he gave us a bid, and he was 
whale, mm -hmm. like Ford do the same thing. Uh, and the other people that we've talked to, it's too small a job for them. They don't want to be bothered with it. So this is somebody that Sean has worked with. He's uh, uh, loves his work, does a very good job. So this is how we want to work with him. Okay. We have a motion to second. Second. Okay, any further discussion on 1965? Not on 1965. I'm just, I'm just curious, Mark. On that ES yeah, system that you guys are putting in, you get maybe a silly question, probably, probably like discuss the media, some kind of like warranty on that. Yeah, the three or five or ten year or something like that. I'm just curious. Ten year warranty. Yeah, perfect. I thought I'd yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, and looking down the road, um, when this thing is up and running, I get my folks trained, and after we do some of the in and stuff, I have to plan one night when you guys can come down to a visit, do a walk to see what this is. And on that same night, I'd like to have the annuals, because they're going to put a new one in service, which I talked to you about, which should be done within a week, just so that we can you get a hands-on feel and see you know, where the tax dollars are going and what we've got you know, okay. you know, for our needs and for the community. Um, I do have a, so how many um, estimates did you get? I had three estimates. Okay. Yeah. So the CMOS, CMOS was one, those are the ones that, that's the one that we wanted like to see was the most in the ballpark. Mm -hmm. The other ones that I talked to, they didn't even want to do it, or it just wasn't within the time frame, they didn't have enough people to do it, mm -hmm. or just a small enough job that not, no interest to it. Mm -hmm. okay. Who's CMOS? Where are they at? Right here on Williams oh, okay. Street, Rollins Street. Oh, okay. CMO. you don't know CMO? Oh, come on, you've been in this town a lot. <laughs> He's done a lot of work in the firehouse. Great. We've used him time and time again. But this I actually don't know him, but I've heard the name and I've been yeah. talking about him. We're all by the way to school. Yeah, he's like a Whenever we need some small things done, he comes right in and just jumps on the floor. But this is something that just he didn't want to do right now. Mm -hmm. um, so what other projects do you plan for building maintenance, and how does that fit into um, this, these projects that weren't planned? After this is all completed? Mm -hmm. Uh, we've got issues in the uh, in the bathroom. We have. Uh, I didn't. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt, but that that was planned. Like you, oh, you had electrical yeah. budgeted. Yeah. Well, for the air packs, but the other work. Um, well, there were system. I think you had. I think that's part of why you increased building yeah. maintenance was for other electrical was issues. Was for other issues that were found when we redid the heating system. There was other electrical deficiencies that needed to be addressed immediately, and some of that money was appropriated for that reason. Okay. Um, so what so what other work do we have coming down the pipe for the well, I'm gonna just stop you there. Let's get this voted on and signed and then we can talk about that stuff, okay? Well but I want to know like are we spending the right dollars and are we gonna be over budget because of other projects? Okay. We will not be over budget. Okay. I've been sitting this chair nine years and I've never gone over budget. Okay. That ain't gonna happen now. Alright, that that's the answer I was looking for. Yes, yeah, don't worry about that, it'll never happen. Well, as long as you got me sitting there. Okay. So I just wanted to know that whatever you have planned will still be taken care of within the budget. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, okay. as an example last year, Kim, we had we had a pump fail in the tank truck mm -hmm. to the tune of $30,000. And there's an immediate need to have to be fixed. Mm -hmm. There was no money available in any of the budget to them within the community. I found $30,000 within my budget to get that done. And some of the stuff that's going to come down the road is a spin-off from that because I had to steal from all the other line items to make that work. Okay. And, and it didn't cost anybody any more money. I didn't ask for no more money. Mm -hmm. I just showed the fire department what they needed for one year. Okay. And now we're going to catch up with some of that. And some of that will come down the road in another week or so and get some stuff that I have to bring in, but it won't go. Okay. No, I think if you're going to have Due diligence in our way. I'm telling you, I'm not going to overspend anything. I'll trust you. Thank you. I mean, if he comes in here with a PO for $10,000, you vote it down. Like, it's pretty um, simple. But it's priorities. You know, we have to uh, okay. priorities. Okay, so we won't do this electrical work that no, we plan? I'm not saying that, Miles. I'm okay. saying, are we going to meet the plan that we had for that money within budget? But you know what the other problem is? You, you, you want to quote a lot of priorities and what our plans are? They might change tomorrow. Right. And right. We have that issue all the time. Like I just give the example of the tank truck thing. Mm -hmm. I came out of nowhere. The 17-year-old piece of equipment had failed. 
that truck has to be in service. Mm -hmm. It affects so many things within our community and our mutual aid responses. Okay. All right, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm sorry, Mark. I'm, I want to move things along. Okay. I've got a mask on for three hours. I want to move things along. I've got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Anything else, Mark? Your email. Okay, I'm and curious about that. I have reached out. Um, Carol and I have had a couple of discussions. He's probably updated you on where you are. We just put the dairy and whatnot. And they have now a red line version of the contract. Okay, and you guys have the contract. Yep. And that's uh, I've, I've gone through that line by line. I made some uh, additions. Caroline fixed a few things that I had found. Um, I have reached out to Dover because that was one of the ones that I said was an alternative. I had a discussion before I came out down here this evening with Chief Haas. And there is interest in the city of Dover to to want to uh, look at the overall program. The timeline is not what the what the contract is that we already have it. And so eight months into the first year that we've never compensated them for. Mm -hmm. If Dover has an interest, if you have an interest, because what Dover is in the long run, they're gonna operate a third annual. But it's gonna take them over a year to accomplish that if their budget allows them to do it. They need to put in for four firefighters and one group and another four on another group, that gives them their eight, that allows them to open another eight months. And they will put that in the central fire station. The timeline for that is 12 to 18 months. So if we plug that in right now, that basically that gets that the same timeline as what we're doing with York. Yeah. So when we get to the end, if you guys can just take care of the York thing, that's where we're going to go on, on your decision. By the time we get to the end of that contract, maybe to the point where those pieces are in place, that they may have an interest. The interest on the bottom line for that, because for them to put on eight firefighters, is going to be an increase of $1 million in the fire department operating budget. And I gave them the numbers for um, what York transports out of our community. They know what the uh, money is that York is receiving from the community. So they have all those pieces put together. And the amount of revenue that they need, they say the starting price would probably be the range of $200,000. So there's a number that we want to hold on to it. I understand where we are. But again, there is some interest there. It's just a matter of all their pieces falling in place. Um, we've had to talk about um, uh, what stewards can bring to the table. Uh, so that's basically all that I have on that. If any other questions that uh, you want me to feel, I'll do it. Just a quick one, and, and it was brought up by a resident, and I'm not sure exactly how to present it to you, but someone, one of our residents went from the Emerald Sky that was originally covered with Blue Cross Blue Shield, and they didn't expect to get a bill for like $1,100, or they expected up to $200. So I don't know if that's addressed in this contract or if it's something that you are able to no longer, they no longer address Blue Cross Blue Shield. Do you, do you know about that? I've heard, I've heard that story. Okay. And I've kind of been asked the same Because that's probably... That's not in this contract. Yep. You can add it to the contract and then send it back to York Ambulance and see what they say about it. We don't know the York Ambulance version of what their relationship is with Blue Cross Blue Shield and, and how that person was built. Right. Yeah. So, but, you know, if you're going to add that to the contract, you might also... You know, are you really going to single out Blue Cross Blue Shield, or do you no, I don't say think, like I don't five major can, insurance but. companies or something like that? I think what York Ambulance would tell you is that people have the option to pay the seventy-five dollar annual membership, which then allows them free ambulance rides for whatever the insurance company doesn't cover. Yeah, that's good enough. That's, yeah, that's something that we said. No, I'm not saying that we all specifically on a rent on a. On a limit, say couple Blue Cross Blue Shield, but on the flip side, if we've had residents for 20 years that have had Blue Cross Blue Shield and we don't expect to have a $100 bill, then there should be some kind of notification. And you don't want someone to decide, hey, I'm not going to call your ambulance because I don't want to pay $100 for Blue Cross Blue Shield. Yeah. And yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking about the big picture. And it might be as many as, at least I'd say 15% of our residents that probably Blue Cross Blue Shield. Significant, for sure. So, that's it. 
But I think Caroline's 100% ready to run forward to back and forth. Of course. And that program in place that will help alleviate that. That's something that, you know, I just want you to know that it's something you can pay 75 or 100 bucks for, like, if it's two of you, whatever, and that covers you, then some people might want to think about that. And that's, that's. Again, it's a case by case basis. Yep. You know, I got gotcha. you. You got a medical issue, you're probably going to use an ambulance on a frequent basis. It probably behooves you to do that. Okay. Oh, and then, just one last thing. I've been really trying to edu educate myself lately, and you know, I spent two hours today trying to figure out exactly, you know, I know, I know the CDC guidelines, and I'm trying to figure out if New Hampshire and Sununu and our guidelines for the state vary from CDC, and I was trying to figure out the amount of cases I saw. It only was up to, I think, August. Right? It said no new cases in Rollins with the 0386 9 zip code. So we don't know how we want to handle it. We want to continue to follow CDC guidelines and you know, I think be cautious. We, yeah. Or do we want to understand what the New Hampshire State guidelines are and if they vary? I don't know if that's a fair question for you. No, I, I, I understand what you're asking. Yep. As far as what has been reported in our community, they still have those numbers that come out there mm -hmm. on a daily basis. You can see where it is. Yep. Scarpa County as a whole um, was like moderate to moderate, moderate, and it's dropped back down. Okay. Okay. Um, our community has not had any new transmissions in the last three or four days that I've seen. Okay. Um, I still look at those numbers on a daily basis to see where we're at, um, not only for the purposes of here, but if I need to do something at the firehouse and have my people protected by masking the thing, we will do that. But as far as where you want to go, what policy you want to set, if it's me, I would follow CDC. Okay. So does that mean in all departments, not CDC? No, well, you read CDC guidelines. Everywhere? Well, well, for instance, if you correct me if I'm wrong, if you're inside, like right now. Vaccinated, not vaccinated, you probably wouldn't ask. But if, for instance, you're alone in an office, or this, I can't say, if you're alone in an office, don't be mad. I won't call it. Um, what I can't speak for is like our police officers, is when they're outside on patrol, they're outside. When they, when they have interaction with the public, I don't know if it's they have to say they have to wear a mask or not. I guess right now it's like, you guys have to do. So I would say the police would have to, but I'm when they're just sure. driving around, the whole car by themselves, so they're out. I mean internally. What? Like, so George and Ed are sharing an office, are they wearing masks? Police, while they're in the station? Yeah. If they're library. sharing an office, like, everybody, library, everybody? I think so. Right? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, you guys can obviously set up the rules guidelines you want to have in your building here. Um, as far as it comes to the fire department, when we roll out on medical aid or having our actual people, we need to roll away a mask. We haven't really brought that since this whole thing started. So when because when we interact with the public, we don't know what this standard is. If vaccinated or not vaccinated, who knows? So we protect ourselves every single time that we do. I'm just um, making sure all departments are, like, internally in this building, you know, employees are required to do it. It should be across the board in all departments. You sent that note to all employees. And don't use CDC guidelines yeah. that relate to what CDC guidelines yeah. are. So, um, so I mean, are you thinking call? that's not clear? Uh, it was a question. It was a question. So, so what is sort of not clear, but I don't want to go down too narrow bridges. Someone like Paul, who's working by himself out by the sick and all pretty doing transfer, I can't imagine you have to wear a mask outside. But then Paul inside, when he's dealing with the public with paper, should probably be wearing it. And it's well, kind of that simple. Well, so, outside, right. the, so that's what CDC says right now, is indoors. So if 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 you're going to follow CDC guidelines, then my understanding is that just means indoors. So okay. if you're indoors at the transfer station or outdoors, then you know what you're doing because you know you're indoors or you're outdoors. Mm -hmm. Right. Didn't expect to go again. No, right. nobody wanted to do that. I don't know, Miles. No, no, Miles, Miles do that. But, yeah. I'm afraid to burn my mask. Hopefully, the short run. Jesus, I'm going to go back. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
the, the York Ambulance contract has been, this version has been reviewed by them as well? No. Oh, okay. I wanted to make sure that you all were on board with the okay. content before we presented it to them. Okay. So where were the suggestions? Uh, that, well, uh, 9, 10, and 11 were new. Um, the ones where did those suggestions come from? Those are marks. Okay. For the longest time, there was no acuity for me. They could do whatever they wanted. We did not know what they were doing. So since we're paying them to be here, town tax dollars, somebody needs to be minding the store. And since it kind of fall, it doesn't. Fire-based EMS is the way that most of it most is done in any kind of professional atmosphere. So it kind of falls on me to do that. And I wanted that in there so I can see what they're doing, how often they're here, what type of calls they're going on, because nobody knew before. Mm -hmm. And uh, that information is also valuable since we just use it for if we go outside and look for some other uh, providers. Now we have some substantial, some concrete numbers that we can throw at them for uh, what our service requires. Can you tell me how many calls we've averaged for the last three years? Calls for who? Ambulance. Average for the last three years is on a steady incline. And usually it's, it's about 50 a month. That's right, a month? right now, it's around 50 per month. And so you keep track of those records? Yeah, yeah. I am in my desk. Okay. I get a report every month from Karen okay. Tucker. She sends to me exactly how many they go, transports, non-transports, and what each call is. Can you, can you share that with us? Yeah, it's just kind of the same question. You guys want to see? I can, I can pull that file that I have. Um, I hope it doesn't have the information. Right. No. Don't share. No, 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 no. It's no more than a tally sheet. Okay. There's no personal identification, any number on that. It doesn't even tell me where they go. It's just okay. telling me how many call and what the type of that. Okay. If I need to be bigger than that, then I'll just go talk okay. about that. What was it, 50 or more? Average. talk if you guys want to but I know it's sort of the decision needs to be made and then you might make your decision at a later date how you're gonna actually use those yeah. funds. Yeah. So uh, Allison unless this sure. unless there's something else I'm missing is you were looking at the Willie Pines sewer line and then the Porter Well, right? Two main projects in the Those are just two ideas. Yeah, yeah and like I said, I mean because we're a village district we can't go after any of this money and you know two of the major components that they've listed as being the uses of these funds are for water and wastewater and yep. infrastructure so we're hoping that you guys will 
consider strongly accepting the funds, and if you do, that you also consider perhaps um, having our district gardens for your district, um, maybe receive some of the funds to help support those projects. What, were the, what was the cost of, I know you had a cost estimate for one and not really the other. For the Porter Well, um, we could ballpark that at more like around 30000 um, to get that fully automated, um, <laughs> finally, after many years of talking about it. Um, but we don't have an estimate on price for the other projects. Um, and like I said, I don't know for sure that those are definitely the uses, and I'm not sure if, if you guys would have to also be involved in the decision making of what the uses would be. Um, right. If the money went to our Right. And I did read all this. The Willie the Willie Pine sewer line is a real concern of yours, I should say, water district because of the exposed. Area, right? and that's yeah, but also yeah. from the stormwater perspective, which is not really the water sewer district's True. issue necessarily, but I know there was a concern um, when they were working on the Willie Street water line replacement, uh, Caroline and Greg and George were walking, he wasn't aware, uh, George wasn't aware that there was that exposed sewer line there, and yeah, so that's kind of kick started that okay. conversation more recently. Right. Uh, we present the mm -hmm. Agreed. Agreed. Um, okay, thank you for that, Allison. Yeah. Um, so in general, the, the ARPA funds, um, and I'm assuming everyone had a chance to read through sort of the stipulation that we would have to achieve. Um, is there, a, so like, let's say we agree tonight to accept, what's the timeline to get these things in place? Um, I would say before you spend funds, okay. there, but that hasn't been actually said, okay. but it's probably a good idea um, to have them in place before you actually sign a contract with a vendor to do something. Gotcha. I mean, I didn't, I didn't think any of this stood out as hurdles we, we can't achieve. Um, I mean, especially for $270,000. Um, any other discussion? No, I agree. I think this, this, there could be, I think there's some room to use some of the funds, but, mm -hmm. you know, sparing of what we need. And, and since you don't have to identify projects that you're going to use the funds for until 2024, you have really quite a long time to talk to the district, the road agent, brainstorm amongst yourselves and, and whoever you think might be stakeholders about how to spend the money. Um, and, and also work on these policies. You have plenty of time between now and 2024, and then once you identify those projects, you have until 2026 to spend the funds. And it'll come in two, two yes. tranches? Yeah. Um, like split 50-50? Correct. Okay. Okay. Kind of policy implementation, is, is the timing pretty much the same as soon as you start spending funds and policies have to be in place? Um, it doesn't explicitly say that, but at the same time it says if you're going to take the funds, you do the policies. So it would make sense that you would do the policies before you spend the funds. Otherwise, who's to say you're ever going to do the policies? You know, I, I think they would probably find that to be a violation to spend the funds without having the policies in place first, but it doesn't explicitly say that. And, and, um, I mean, that it would also be them performing some sort of audit. Correct. Like, that's really what all of this is. It's, yeah. it's, it's all auditable. We have to keep the records for five years uh, after the last um, expenditure. So the period five years after 2026, potentially, you have to keep all of the associated records. And yes, it's all subject to audit. Okay. So just on a side note, I put another part of the game mark here. I was going on. So I might, I might have been there. Let me reach out so if he wants. He's trying to get back to me, so that's a good sign. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Let me ask my wife. No, yeah, the answer sure. is no. <laughs> um, <okay. laughs> All right. Um, so at this point, I think we, 
don't know if by consensus or if we want a motion to, to accept the ARPA funds. Um, I would like a motion just yeah, because of the. I'll make a motion to to go forward with accepting the ARP funds. The ARPA funds. ARPA funds. Second. Okay. Any further discussion on that? All right. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 And I'm gonna sign. There, there are two separate things to sign. Okay. I'll, so, guidance on that. so I guess a slight discussion is it still needs to be voted and it still has to be approved by the public, right? Is yeah, that correct? Well, no, no, no. Okay. It is completely at your discretion, except that you have to have a public hearing. So one would hope that if you have this idea and you present it to the public and everybody says, no, that's horrible, that you would listen to that and change your mind. But ultimately, it's your decision. Okay. So we have uh -huh. to have a public hearing. Yeah. yeah. And, Okay. Just, a, just a point of clarity. So you're making a motion to accept the ARPA funds for these projects? No, nope. yeah, just, just, just in general. To apply. Okay. We'll apply. We'll apply. We may not accept any, we may accept all. So you've applied, or you, they're granting you these funds and you're agreeing to take them? The motion is to apply for the funds. Oh, to apply for the funds. To a, I'm sorry, I just want to make it clear. No, it's good. To a specific project or just for town-wide projects? Just to get all of the, apply for all of the The available ARPA funds okay. um, allocated. allocated to Bronxford. Okay. Projects to be defined. Okay. And I, I'm sorry, I know the answer is, I just have to clarify it. So, you know, it's like $207,000. $27,000, but Rollinsford can decide to only use $7,000. I just want to make sure we don't, when we, right now when we're applying, we're not applying for $27,000. We have opted for $27,000. Yes. Okay, I just want to know. I, well, you have to be really careful about that because you're getting the money and you're, you're getting half of it now and you're going to get half of it in a year. But, so, so it's going to sit in the general fund and the auditor is going to keep track of it as designated fund balance, restricted designated fund balance. In other words, only you know, only for certain purposes. Okay. But the select board in three years might be completely different than it is today. Mm -hmm. And are they going to remember not to, you know, oh, it looks like we have a healthy fund balance, and then try to offset the tax rate with it. And that would not be allowed. So it's, it's really important to um, just keep track of the idea of that, that it's coming and we're going to sit on those funds for two or three years, potentially, and then we have to give it back if we're not going to use it. Okay. Is it a full, uh, so Paul's question, is it a full, full 270? Yes. So it's kind of like a, is it like a line of credit? Program? Well, no, I take it back. You know what? I take back everything. I take it back. I, I'm sorry. Um, I think it's a reimbursement. Well, now I'm confused because on the one hand, I know that people are getting their money, their, the first tranche, they're getting it, lots of communities have already received it, but on the other hand, I know that we're supposed to send regular reports to them every month on how much of that funding we have spent, so, you know, there will be a file on the ARPA fund, so I don't, I don't think that there will be a whole lot of money just sitting in the bank account that nobody you know, really knows what it's for. I, so, there's that. The monthly accounting, I think, will take care of that. Sounds like we need to reread this. It is very complicated, and they are continuing to change guidance on it all the time. Mm -hmm. okay. So, the motion was to apply for funds. <laughs> and we vote, right? Okay. Uh, I think we're good there. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate thank you, Alex. Thank you for voting yes. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, so 2022 budget planning. Um, was there anything to talk about here? Um, I guess we, need, we were looking to give department heads guidance as to how they should prepare their budget. So, so there, there are three things. The guidance, like what are you looking for their budgets to look like? flat line, focus on salary, 
a, a certain percentage increase in that bar or, or something else. Um, so, so guidance, a deadline, when would you like to receive their budget proposals by, and then also a presentation date. That's something the board would typically do, like, like on what, so it's typically a select board meeting night, but it doesn't have to be, that you want to hear from each of them to kind of walk through with them what their budget proposal is. So that like help explain where they're coming from with what they're presenting to you. Okay. Was this? There was a schedule. Mm -hmm. Yes. You guys have that from the that, that's the project was committee like schedule. I I, yeah, I printed yeah, one of them. I might even have this. Uh, you don't. I just committee. printed the one. So, so but. September 29th, CIP and Highway Transfer Station are going before the budget committee. So, the select board needs to focus on you know getting those two in line. But at the same time, it, it's a little bit of a, a, a chicken and an egg because maybe you can't really decide just CIP and highway without deciding what are you going to do overall for raises for people or what is the overall percentage increase in the whole operating budget you're going to try to state. So so while it looks like you're looking at individual departments. Yeah, no, okay. I didn't mean to like, stop you, but um, sorry, I looked at a whole bunch of emails in the last couple of days and I thought I was reading something about what we saw a highway like August. And was it like? Uh, was that's the basis CIP. CIP. Okay. So, so the CIP committee is meeting next week on Tuesday and Thursday to hear presentations from department heads just about CIP stuff. Okay. All right. That's what I saw. So, we are still in the 16th for strategy. Is that still coming next week? Yeah. Right. Okay. Then we'll be covering that a lot more closely. Today. The budget stuff? Yeah. Like, um, I mean, I think we should be prepared to offer. Well, to get in the budget. Well, strategy. I mean, we've got to figure out how we're going to get okay, it. So, uh, no, no. Well, um, it's it's posted as a regular meeting, so you can prioritize that time however you want to, and it doesn't. It just needs to be the strategy, the strategic planning workshop, which is the spreadsheet that we projected, and well prioritized each one of those items, but. Um, it would be helpful for the department because you know they they know it's budget season, yep. but they're not you know they don't know when you you know what you're looking for or when you want to see it. Okay. So I mean I think in general the, the guidance should be much like last year that like I don't see us funding new type talent. Um, I know that sometimes comes up that people want an extra person. I don't think we can go another year without uh, giving more than a or one percent raise or less. <coughs> it's just my opinion, um, but as flat as possible, focusing on wages. That is a, a way. You, you typically do get a proposal from more than one department about additional people, and, mm -hmm. and that's kind of a way to. Um, help them feel better about, no, we don't want to see that, but if you're going to focus that kind of funding idea on everybody's salary concerns, then that might be better received. So last year, the deadline for department heads was the middle of August. So once you all receive these proposals, I will be, as they come in, I will be putting them on a master spreadsheet so you can see them all together in one big town budget. Um, but you then have until the end of August to start meeting with the budget committee and knowing, you know, what you want department heads to be presenting. Okay. To them. So, not much more. Have we thought about kind of backing into the, the dates? So, for example, presentation dates. Um, so the budget needs to be, say, the deadline is, say, three weeks before the presentation date, which is at least one meeting before mm -hmm. they have to present their one select board meeting. Yep, I think that makes sense. So that gives them a little bit more time. So if they have to present, for example, police have to present on October 6th, then the select board meeting prior to that 
it needs to be the presentation date. And then realistically, the deadline for submission to Caroline, for example, might be even a week before that. So we see it before the presentation. Which is good, so that you can get a sense of what you think about it. Yeah. But if you're doing that, then you're, um, the last presentation that you're going to see, whatever that department is, mm -hmm. um, where is that relative to when you have to have the whole budget ready for, you know, in the meantime, so say for example, police is in October, mm -hmm. but highway is meeting with the budget committee in August. So what is the highway department presenting to the budget committee in August when you don't, you haven't really started to discuss and deliberate over the police budget? So, so, you know, that helps break it down for you, but it doesn't help you focus on the big picture. Like, are you going to make a highway department decision before you even discuss the police department budget? Yeah, it gets, uh, it gets tricky, obviously. You got to get the probably have a little bit of time for put the budget together for the same. I mean, what's your sense at this point with where they're at, where they started? They have a template and they know it's budget season, so they should be pretty much ready to go. Um, that being said, you know, they all have regular other duties they've been mm -hmm. attending to, so, um, you know, prob I mean, I, I think they're probably pretty close or nearly ready. Um, what might not be done yet is the narrative that typically goes along with it that explains what they're trying to accomplish and what the budget represents. Um, but I would think, um, today being Monday, um, you could give them maybe until the end of next week, and then, um, I don't know what that puts us for, debt, for dates, and then I can, I will receive some of them before then, and then, um, yeah. but keep in mind, you know, in the meantime, you know, if you're going to have an idea of what you think this budget looks like by the 29th, um, by the way, 29th on my calendar here is a Sunday. So that was going the by. 29th of August? Yeah, the 29th of August is a Sunday. I'm just is that it. when someone's supposed to be meeting with the budget committee? I thought that the budget committee, is that on the budget No, committee? I think it's September 29th. Oh, September 29th. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, September 29th. Got it. All right, so I'm going to say it So So that gives you about a month to figure this out. Yep. Um, that's tight for how this board typically operates. So um, I guess if you're, you know, you're going to do that, you might A, think about more meetings and when you're going to schedule them, and B, Whatever you don't understand about how the budget functions, um, and questions you have about, like, like really, like, start looking at that rebudgeting worksheet and the expense, the expenses to date, to try to get a sense of how money's spent, what do the, what do those lines represent, and ask questions sooner rather than later, so that you're better prepared for those workshops when they, when they start. But I think if you're going to go, um, you know. Kim's new. It's all different, you know. We'll, and, and you but two have been on the budget. But five years on the budget committee, so right. So, yeah. but you know, it, it's a different level of detail here. So, I, I don't know how quickly you think you can do this. Sorry, I'm trying to follow up. So, when did they last year? It was mid August. Was the deadline for department has to submit to? So let's start with that. So let's let's work with next Friday, which is the twentieth. I think that's. Workable for them. How is it? It's crazy. Yes, it is. I mean, next Friday is the 20th, and then next, next Friday after that's the 27th. It's like what? It's nuts. So then that. So that that's over a month away before they have to do the presentation. The first one. First day. Yeah. So, right, so that's presentations to the budget committee, so that gives you a month to decide what that looks like. They'll come and present to the select board. 
the budget. Well, right. So, so when when that the agenda says present budget presentations, what I'm really asking of you is, while the budgets are due on the 20th, so far it seems um, open for discussion. Do you want them in um, the select board meeting of the on the 23rd, that following Monday, to present budgets? Do you want to do them all in one night? Do you want to have another night? Do you want to break them in half? I don't think that's enough time to get them on the 20th and be ready on the 23rd. Well, I, so, on the, uh, their, their head's in the game because they've just done this. They've mm -hmm. just submitted it. They've been working on it. So, mm -hmm. so you know, I think they're ready at any time yeah. once it's prepared and submitted. But I don't think we're ready. So if we get Maybe. them on the 20th, that only gives us the weekend to go through all of them and be prepared to hear them on the following Well, day. right. And I may not even have this spreadsheet completely right. compiled, mm -hmm. but you can at least get a sense of where they're coming from and what they're trying to do and you have you know they're submitting a template that shows their budget mm -hmm. so you're right it only gives you the weekend to review it but um you can hear them and then you still have that month to work it out it's however you feel like you need to work but it's got to be somehow workable with the project right i mean i think we need to throw down at least a date to work towards so maybe there's an off schedule meeting on the 30th. Is that the longest? Is that the longest? Is that because Labor Day is the following I don't know when Labor Day is. It is the following Monday. Six, so yeah, we can shoot for that. And so do you want to do them all in one night and have them all go on the 30th? Do we have an off on the 30th? There's not one scheduled yet. Right. Oh, we need to go later. No. no. So that's it would be a two. Well, so then the 30th probably makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. by the way, I don't know when you, you know, I, you all do need to discuss what to do about the Labor Day meeting. Typically, that gets moved so it's not on a holiday. But the following day is planning board. So that's another conversation, but it should be moved. Okay. So the, the 30th, and I, I don't know, I don't know how, like, some of them go pretty quickly, um, others do not. So I don't, I don't, I think all in one night is a stretch. Um, I'm trying to break them into those two Mondays, the 23rd and the 30th. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And maybe the 23rd would go like, more like the five days for the day. Right. Organized to present. Okay. Um, and Paul, are you going to be able to work with recreation to see if they can? Yeah, I'll try. Put some uh, together by then. Yeah, I'll, I'll reach out to the Yep. Twenty third. Deadline of the twentieth, and then presenting on the twenty third or thirtieth. Yep. I know my doctrine problem. Okay, so do you do we have guidance to offer them at this point? Flat, as close to flat as possible. Yeah. Yeah, and. I don't see the incomes changing, and you know, and I agree that last year one percent of the when it comes to talk, we can talk about that. I mean, we were we were pretty close to saying zero. I know, um, I would know just because of the state mm -hmm. unknown, but we did, did agree on one percent. I don't see that as being palatable to a lot of folks. Um, I, I would. The one thing I would. I want to suggest is that we take a step towards something um, in the employment area and ask the department heads to set a goal of coming up with a blanket assessment for their employees. Mm -hmm. And then if they can achieve that next year, you know, maybe we can do something a little bit different in terms of compensation, you know, something maybe a little more equitable. Sure. But, but I mean, from a budget planning perspective, mm -hmm. I think you said, and this is just right. my a percent goal, mm -hmm. and then within that, maybe someone gets zero, maybe someone gets four. Um, but that's 
going to be up to the manager to catch. Um, it's a complex subject. Yes, it definitely is. Okay. Yeah. But I agree with that thought process. You know, maybe not zero, but somewhere between one and four. Unless the yeah. person is you know, really. Okay. I think we're good with budget planning. Yep. Do mm -hmm. you have a clear clear Great. Um, facilities director. You I saw sorry a quick thing. Based on our last conversation, it seemed like maybe the way to go was to consider contracting it out, which I think makes a certain amount of sense. Um, but we whether this is an employment position or a contractor, it's important to identify what what, it, what are the expectations about the job. Um, so what you have before you is my understanding of what the board's goals were with this position um, when it was originally budgeted. So that's up for discussion. And, and also whether or not you think this would be better as an employment position or a contractor position. Um, employment, you pay wages. Um, either hourly or salary based on a certain number of hours. Um, contractor, you're not responsible for, you know, contractors are people who do the job for um, more than one person, and you pay them at 1099, and you're not responsible for employment taxes. But um, it really infers that they do this for other people. It's not intended to be a way to just not pay employment taxes, for example. So I was thinking maybe like a property management Mm -hmm. um, so I, I was thinking about this, and I think there's value in getting um, some estimates for annual contracts for our systems, our plumbing system, um, our electrical system, our air systems, and then I would think that in terms of general building assessment, that our building inspector could do some assessment of this building, since that's what he, he does. He, well, it's it's. It's not really his job, but we've asked him to take that on for the pur for some purposes. Um, it's not within his given number of hours to like make sure that we have contracts in place, nor is that been no, his duty. I wouldn't expect um, him to manage that. Um, I would expect us, you know, you and the select board to receive contracts, um, proposals, and then make decisions on them. And then if they're annual contracts, then they come in, they schedule service, they come in, they evaluate, they fix. So our experience with that is that nobody remembers to renew them, and the vendors don't remember to come out and do the service. It's on us to call them and schedule the service, and that's not been anybody's job. I'll so, here. Which is great for as long as you're here. So, but then, you know, it's Well, but that should really be on your position, your though. I think just to manage like our contracts, I think that's easy enough to do. I can't get into the police department, so I can't schedule anybody for there. But you know, it hasn't been, and if you think that that is worthwhile and I you know, it's it's a considerable amount of time for the amount of attention this building needs. But I don't have expertise in that, and it doesn't help you with your other facilities. Well, I guess so, just put the con just having the contractors start with a proposal is all I'm saying. Like find out what it means to have a contractor, an annual contract, go buy an annual contract for these systems. I can try that. I've never heard of a, you know a plumbing company or electrical offer that. We've typically had the overhead doors and heating systems. Um, but I've never been aware of, nobody's ever offered, you know, or, or said they have that. But I, I can ask. So the facility you know. I look at is the one that is going to be the most attention right here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I feel like I haven't talked to George, but I feel like George pretty much, he mentioned it to me more than once that he feels comfortable maintaining his building. Mm -hmm. So, and then, you know, fire department with Sean maintaining that. I shouldn't say Sean, but they, we, I feel the fire department is in pretty good shape now. Well, so we're, you have new we're, systems we're, there. No, I know. But I'm just saying, there's a thought process there that I, I know where you're going with and stuff. And really, the building we need to look at, keep up is this one, I think. 
out of everything. In terms of maintenance, so. yes. It's really about making sure that, um, A, we have those contracts in place for infrastructure that can have a contract, and that, B, somebody is scheduling whatever the service is, for example, I, I think we're supposed to do filters on the AC systems in this building quarterly. I'm not really sure about that, but it, you know, who, who would remember that that happens because it's not typically the vendor. They wait for us to call. So those are the things that you know, are falling through the cracks. Who's going to notice that right now the gutters are so clogged with debris that there are weeds a foot high growing out of them? That, that's really like, so we can have contracts in place for systems, and, and I think that would be a great start, but um, we have um, wood trim falling off the back of the building. Um, I don't know who a vendor would be for that. I don't know what the underlying problem is with that. I know that you know the, the white trim up high in the front of the building definitely needs to be painted. I may or may not be able to find a contractor that has the kind of equipment to get that high, but somebody to keep an eye on the things that those of us who are not trained to have an eye on those things would, would bring to somebody's attention, find a contractor, schedule to meet a vendor to look at something and give a quote. You mentioned at CIP that the school has a new facilities yes. person, and I, I know that um, Aaron is going to ask about some costume with that person. So I think that would be 